Define the Tesla. It's a unit for the magnetic flux density B, aka magnetic field strength. So if you ever forget, maybe you can think of, oh, FBIL sine theta is the equation we always use to calculate, right? So then that means B must be F over I L sine theta. But of course, we will simplify things. So first you can say, oh, it is a force, magnetic force per unit meter because F over L. L is the length of wire. Ma. Since we're talking about wires, might as well talk about that. So force per unit meter, also known as one newton meter, acting on what? Ah? Acting on a straight, long metal wire. I'll just say a straight wire. What about what about the wire? Is it what current is it carrying? We talk about force, we talk about length. Oh, let's talk about I. Oh, uh, 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 carrying one ampere of current. Okay, what else we talk about? Oh, theta, sine theta. Okay, so we're going to say, uh, for convenience sake, we want to get rid of the theta. So theta is 90 degrees, which means the magnetic flux must be perpendicular to the current. So current is something like that. Um, that's if we want to define, uh, uh, make it easier to define. Uh. So carrying 1M, that is normal. Normal means perpendicular. So like this, perpendicular. Normal to a uniform magnetic flux density, aka a uniform B. I'm shortcutting, so I didn't write out the whole sentence, but B is magnetic flux density. Okay, two marks for this. First one, if you talk about force per unit meter, that is A1. Uh, what else? Ah? Carrying, oh, straight wire carrying 1M normal to a uniform B. Okay, so the current is normal to think, and that is two marks there. All right, so over the past years, you will see slightly different variations of the, the unit of Tesla, the definition. But most of them all based on the same thing of this equation. So if you forget, remember, F equals BIL, rearrange, and that is your definition of magnetic flux density and also Tesla. Okay, we see, oh, we have seen this before. Two long straight vertical wires separated by a distance 4.5. Okay, then the wires pass through horizontal cut PQRS. The wire in, in X, in the current, sorry, is 6.3 upwards initially. There is no current in wire Y. So you already have 6.3 amps flowing upwards in the first wire X. On the figure, sketch the magnetic flux pattern due to the current in wire X. So show at least four flux lines. Okay, so they are telling me that wire X got current, right? That current flowing in the wire will generate an electric generate a magnetic field around it and we're supposed to draw the magnetic field so here you have to use your right hand grip rule also known as the good thumbs up emoji like this <laughs> see so you're gonna use your right hand align your thumb with the current and then you will see where your fingers curl and that will be the magnetic field so you'll put your thumb there and you say oh the thumb should be pointing up because current is flowing up, so then your magnetic flux pattern or flux lines will be something like this, circles in this direction. But you need to draw many, right? Okay, okay, so we draw a few more. So the first few, you've got to draw the lines quite close because that means the field is very strong there. The flux density, the B is very strong. But as you get further out, then you can start to space out a bit, increase the separation distance between each circle. The next one, wow, make even bigger lah. Okay, can also, nah, make bigger. It's not exactly round because it's, we're looking at it at an angle, but that is how you could draw something like this. Okay, so this one there is about, how many marks is this ah? Three marks, right? Wow, three marks for a diagram ah. Wow, one mark is if you draw concentric circles. Concentric means circle inside circle inside circle. Got it or not? One, two, three, four, at least four. Okay, sure. So concentric circles, M1. Uh, you also need to show the separation increasing. Separation increasing, and that is a, oh, you forgot to say A1. So it means at first they are very close together. Then as you get further away, the spacing between the circles must get bigger as well. 
because the feel is getting weaker and weaker the further away from the wire you go. Third last mark is the direction. You gotta draw arrow correctly or not. It should be like this, uh, the diagram that you draw. Anti-clockwise pattern. Anti-clockwise. How we know? From our right hand grip rule, the thumb. Okay, so that is three marks for this first part. Let's move on to see what next. Probably I'll do some cal oh, calculation now. Okay, they give us the equation. The magnetic flux density, or aka like, you know, like field strength, electric field strength, but now we're looking at magnetic flux density. Some distance from a long straight current carrying wire is given by this expression. B equals to mu naught i over 2 pi x. So they always give you an equation, lah, so you don't need to worry if you can't remember this. Calculate the magnetic flux density at y due to the current in wire x. So if we rewind back to the picture a bit, you want to find B at wire y. So where is wire y position? Ah, so it's asking you at exactly where wire y is. So basically this spot right here, what is the B at that spot? So it's kind of nice to give us an equation for, for uh, how to calculate the B. So wire x is the one creating the field and you want to ask what is the B at position at wire y. So it's kind of hard to do it. You are 4.5 cm away from the source that generates the, the magnetic field. So we're going to use our 4.5 cm in the equation. So let's write it out. You want to find magnetic flux density? Okay, here we go. So mu naught is what? Uh? Mu naught is a constant. 4 pi times 10 negative 7. You can find this constant at the first page of every question paper or in your calculator. That's the first one. Uh, I, current. What's the current flowing through this wire? Uh? This wire generate the field, right? What's the current? 6.3 amps. So you want to write, oh, 6.3. So we write the 6.3 amps over here. Divided by, so we're going to add 2 pi times x. So the distance from the wire. So distance from the wire will be this distance, which is 4.5 cm away from the wire that generated the field. So let's write that, 4.5 cm. Hey, don't forget our centimeters. Oh. So must 10 negative 2 to make sure this whole thing is a unit, SI unit of meters to make it. Standardized. Okay, so press calculator, you should get a value of about 2.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Tesla. Unit of B is Tesla. Tesla, Tesla. Okay, la, test here. So the one answer is going to be uh, your final answer. That will be an accuracy mark. The other mark will come from substitution. If you sub in the correct values, all these values sub inside there, then okay, C1. Next one. Oh, now you add current on wire Y, 9.3 amps. Hmm. Use your answer to calculate the force per unit length on wire Y. Force per unit length is what? Uh? F over L. Where F over L come from? So when you see force and wires, gotta think of your F equals to B I L sine theta. So what's happening now uh, is now you have 9.3 amps already, oh. So, in this second wire, you have 9.3 amps. Let's say it's going up. I don't know what, what direction it is, but I'm just going to say, let's say it's 9.3 amps upwards. Means now you will have a force acting on the wire. If it's going upwards, you can say, oh, at the wire, the magnetic field is pointing kind of straight in, following the blue color. Current is upwards. So you use a finger point check. Oh, so there might be a force pointing to the left if the current is upwards. That's just a quick check. So they didn't ask for the direction of force, but we're going to calculate the force right now. So let's do that right here. So what info do we know? Okay, let's go. Uh, B, what is the magnetic flux density at wire Y? We just found it right here. At wire Y, ma? Flux density at, at wire Y. So now we have to use Flux density at wire y, and that will be 2.8 times 10 negative 5. Current, they give us the quite a big current, 9 amps. Oh my goodness. You kind of have to, like, if you want to see the effect. Uh, length, oh. We don't know the length of the wire, but they want us to find force per unit length. So per unit length, 
tells me something that I don't need to know the length because I can just move the L here. Ah, F over L, force per unit length. All that's left is sine. What is this theta? Theta is the angle between the magnetic flux density and the current, which is thankfully perpendicular. So we just sine of 90. Check back the diagram. Lah. Okay. Mm, so we use our calculator and calculate. We should get a value of about 2.604 times 10, negative 4 newton meter, per meter, sorry, it's F over L, ma. so you can just write here, 2.6 times 10, negative 4, miss, why you write 2 as F, hang on, hang on, this is A1 mark, uh, 2 marks, right, ah, oh, the other one is this one, they are very gracious, they give you for equation, it's an equation mark, not substitution mark, so why I chose 2 as F down here, is because I see what values I use to calculate this number, so 2.8, 2 SF also, uh, here also 2 SF. Okay, la, so I can either do 2 or 3 SF, but I don't need 3 SF, so I'll just stick with 2 for now. Okay? Alright, last one. The currents in the two wires are not equal. Indeed. One of it is 6.3. I lost my thing. It is 6.3, yeah, 6.3. So one of these wires got 6.3 amps. The other wire, I don't know, is it up or down? Okay, la, let's say it's up. 9.3 what wow, bigger there so will the force on both wires be the same like you know let's say if this way will it be the same force one force two well you we got to remember uh in previous part we talked about how force per unit length of a wire is proportional to i1 times i2 so both currents and inversely proportional to how far apart these two wires are so that's a reminder so you need to say, ah, oh, it'll be the same lah. I pull you with this force, you pull me with this force. So you can explain that and say, the force depends on product of two currents, I1 times I2. Or in this case, Ix and Iy. Yeah. So force depends on product of two currents or product of the currents. Your current multiplied with my current. And... The force have equal, both forces have equal magnitude opposite direction. Wow, that sounds familiar. Is that Newton's third law? Yes, it is. Equal magnitude opposite direction. Hmm. AKA Newton's third law. So you can conclude, oh, because of that, uh, it doesn't matter what, how different their current is, the force will still be the same, and hence, full stop, hence, this force per unit length is the same for both wires. Whew. Long writing. First one is, uh, you're talking about product of current and equal magnitude, oppos equal magnitude opposite direction. So that's the Newton's law, and then you conclude, okay, hence F over L is same. No, it's kind of hard to imagine, like, why why is it the same? I don't know, it's just the math and behavior of it. In fact, you can go and play with it in some simulations where you get to see for yourself the product. Okay, so one wire can have small current, the other one very big current. The force will be the same. Force on force by B and force by A, 5.3, 5.3, 5 okay, no? So if you increase, let's say, one of the current, the force will increase, yes. But it will increase for both because you are still multiplying both at the end of the day, ma, both currents. So see, 13.3, 13.3. Okay, long. So that's how you can think of it. All right. Remember the relationship between this relationship, especially the uh, force between two parallel wires. Ah, that is the relationship to remember.